Welcome back for another episode of Waterpark Rangers Let's Play Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. In the last episode, Gilderoy Lockhart put us through cruel and unusual punishment to find this, the Expelliarmus Spellbook, which we're picking up right now. Harry's so happy he's flipping out. Expelliarmus is unique in the fact that it isn't really like your other spells because you don't shoot it out of your wand. It's more of a shield to block from uh, spells that are shot at you. And you can reflect shots multiple times. And you're going to see all that Expelliarmus can do right here because you're forced to use it against this new stronger enemy, this stone gargoyle. So Expelliarmus is used to shoot back this guy's spell. You just take it out at the right time and then send it back. You have about three seconds of that shield time. If you hold down any longer than that, he'll overload and Harry will fall over, making him a really easy target. And we got hit right there. As you can see, he can deflect um, he can deflect the spell armus even after you've hit it uh, back at him. So you kind of have to start like a game of tennis uh, between the gargoyle and Harry uh, just long enough so that it goes back and hits him. It's sort of like fighting um, Phantom Ganon in the Zelda series. Or some of the other bosses that you're required to knock projectiles back. I think that's called Dead Man's Wall. If you watch closely, you can tell that there are more opportune times to hit him. When he uh, really does that big wind up uh, to throw a spell, that's the best time to knock it back at him. Otherwise, it's kind of dangerous. You don't get the right angle. But with that, uh, you've learned to use Expelliarmus, and he's pretty easily dealt with overall. And that's all there is to Gilderoy Lockhart's Expelliarmus Challenge Chamber, I think. If there's anything else, I haven't found it. Like that uh, locked door from before. I'm not sure what's up with that. Harry won't stop swinging to the side. That glitch is really annoying for these kinds of cutscenes. It always ruins the moment. Oh, and the first time uh, uh, I played this game, this part here was always just so nerve-wracking because I was afraid that something much harder was going to come out from behind the doors. And you'll see to an extent I'm kind of uh, correct about that. Well done, Potter! 40 house points That's not going to be enough to cover my lawsuits. Now I'd like you to use the Expelliarmus spell you've just acquired in a real duel. Mr. Malfoy, come over here. Let's see what you can make of the famous Potter. First duelist to gain five points wins the duel. Very well then. One's at the ready. When I count to three... Scared, Potter. You wish. One, two, three. So this is a much harder fight that I was talking about. You have to fight Malfoy, and unlike the Gargoyle, he's much less of a pushover. As you can see, there's a lot more fast pace, a lot more spells to dodge. I'm just barely avoiding those little shockwaves. And apparently someone threw a bean at me, but okay, I'll take it. Banana, my favorite flavor. So yeah, when you shoot at him, he has Expelliarmus too, so he can block it. The key uh, that I found up to beating him is to shoot Expelliarmus back and then shoot Flopendo right as he's sending uh, that spell back because he can't react quickly enough to block it. And then when he's down, just attack him mercilessly until he starts um, blocking well again, and then switch back to strategy one. It's cheap, but I found that just trying to reflect uh, the spell at him with Expel Expelliarmus over and over is a really bad idea, because he seems to have a really, really good ability to like deflect it every single time. <laughs> and with that, we've won. So it's more like whoever loses five first uh, loses, not whoever gets five first wins. I'm a what? A parcel mouth. You're a wizard, Harry. You can talk to snakes. So, does it matter? It matters, Harry, because being able to talk to snakes was what Salazar Slytherin was famous for. That's why the symbol of Slytherin House is a serpent. Now the whole school's going to think you're his great, 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 great grandson or something. But I'm not. You'll find that hard to prove. He lived about a thousand years ago. For all we know, you could be. Anyway, we've got Quidditch Wow, just because you stutter doesn't mean you can change the subject that easily, Ron. 
but apparently it could. So with that all behind us, suddenly and randomly, we've got to go to Quidditch next. And it's a lot like flying practice, you'll see. It's like flying practice with a couple extra things added in. And that's what flying practice was the uh, build up for. And before you want to leave the room, it's best to check this room to get this extra wizard card. Well, with that major class out of the way, uh, we're pretty much going to continue uh, picking up the rest of the wizard cards that we can get at this point. I know I've said that whenever you get a new spell, there are new chests you can get, but truthfully, there's nothing new you can get uh, from Expelliarmus, to my knowledge. And I know this game pretty well. Not perfect. But then again, neither is the, is the game. <laughs> That's not an insult, it's a good game, as you've seen. So the rest are still just uh, normal and defendo. And there are hardly any more to get. It's just they were on lower floors in the Lockhart's uh, area. So I figured they wouldn't really be worth bothering with. I just wanted to get the class over with first and then pick up whatever was left behind. If you don't like these uh, wizard card collecting segments, you can always just skip ahead to whenever there's a place that looks like something different than the Grand Staircase, because that's really the only place where we search for wizard cards. Of course, if you uh, want to get more health upgrades, because they will help you a little bit, admittedly, even though they're pretty pathetic individually, there is some strength in numbers here, so they might be worth going after, but only if you're going to be serious about it. And also, there's a neat little thing here. If you take this passage, then you get the grand staircase to swivel around. The stairs don't move all that much like they do in the, the movie or the books, but it's still nice to see those little touches here and there. Admittedly, there is uh, quite a good amount of attention to detail in this game. Having played uh, and seen a couple of the other Harry Potter games, I can say this one is definitely more quality than the others, even the newer ones. Hello, Harry. Let's go outside to the Quidditch Stadium. Just because the gameplay is a lot more uh, solid, the more recent ones are a little bit too loose and have weird motion controls and stuff, if you're playing them on the Wii. And also this treasure chest here, it's weird, I don't know if you can get it earlier, because I looked for it one time, uh, the night that we had to save Neville from the tapestry. Because uh, we had to go to the greenhouse, and I searched around, for some reason it wasn't here. I think there may be some changes, uh, like, maybe more treasure chests start to become available the further days you get along in Hogwarts. I'm gonna be, uh, wow, visible wall, right there. I'm gonna be checking around, uh, the castle quite frequently to see if there's any changes, so I'll let you know if there are. Listen up, you lot. He says, We're listen up, you lot, but I think year. Harry's and like the only one here, practice, practice, or at least practice. if there are other people, then First, they're somehow walking Peter, behind the camera very year. slowly. I'll start with the seeker. Over here, yeah, you might as well start with the only person that you can see other than yourself. Now watch carefully. That's good, Harry. Flying through each ring makes you go faster and increases the magical charge in your brain. So you start off flying even slower than flying practice. But you'll see, the more of these rings that you go through, you'll pick up speed until eventually you start going faster than you would even just normally flying your broom. Now you're going faster, you'll see the magical charge in your broom has increased too. You can see this in the trail the broom is leaving in the air behind you. Thanks, Wood. He's sort of like my co-commentary here, I guess you could say. Because he's sort of telling you stuff you already know, but also adding, like, nice details, so that's helpful. Your broom is at maximum. You can now get that extra boost of speed. Chris Y. I'll say the part he didn't say. So that's for the boost. The boost is great because it makes you hit towers. No, the boost is great because it gives you that really nice burst of speed that helps you get up to the, the snitch. But unfortunately, the huge downside is that it has terrible control. So don't try using it um, unless you really know that you have a nice open space. That's a bludger hat. Don't let it hit you or it will reduce the magical charge in your room. The heart too. The heart too. Duck Harry! I want to send it up in hospital wing. So, bludgers are just kind of irritating. We're going to use a boost here and try to gain more ground on the snitch. That's what 
leaving these uh, rings behind, as you can see now pretty clearly. So bludgers really aren't that bad. If you get hit by one, it isn't the end of the world. It's much worse to hit a, uh, a tower or a wall, because if you do, then you'll lose a lot of time and you'll have to restart. It's really annoying. So now we're using the boost for the snitch. If we get it, great. If not, I'm putting a failure montage. Okay, failure montage time. This is another failure. It looks like a success, but I promise you it's going to be a failure. I decided to show you that because these things usually don't turn out well. And I'm pretty sure you didn't want to see me flying around for ages trying to catch a snitch. Alright, so here's the part where you just swing it your arm at one spot. And we actually got it on our second try. It's incredible. Usually it takes like 15 times for Harry to catch the snitch. Okay, maybe not 15 because you don't have all that much time. You know the score. One opposing seeker, two bludgers, and two opposing beaters to contend with. All you have to do is catch the snitch. So now Wood makes you do the same thing again. Only there are a few differences. At the bottom there's a little thing that shows you uh, how close you are to the snitch. And during a real Quidditch match, there will be another person there who's usually on the chart. And that'll determine where they are. Only their position shifts around really erratically. I have a feeling they don't play by the same rules we do. Okay, so we're using a boost here. And that is how you do a well-timed boost. Not at a sharp corner like I did all those times I failed in the last little bit. This time there's going to be no mess-ups. If, if we fly like this during a real uh, Quidditch match later, we are going to destroy all of the houses. I hope. See, look, we got there in just two. No trouble. The trouble is getting Harry to catch the snitch. Watch, he's so incredibly hopeless. He only swings his arm in one direction. Can't do anything else. His head falls it, yet he just swings and... Wow. It took us like seven tries, but we got it. But usually by that point, either the other seeker gets it or the snitch gets away. You just have to get lucky and hope it flies near you. Super At least we're Harry with Harry. You receive an A+. And because of Did you hear that? Performance, Harry, he said a plot. To take with you. Not a plus, a plot. Anywhere around the grounds, but try not to crash into too many of the towers. If you want to try and improve your Quidditch practice grade, come back and see me here at any time of the day. Yeah, I want a grade better than a plot. Hello there, Hermione. What's the matter? Malfoy showed up while you were practicing in the Quidditch stadium. He's been made seeker after his dad brought his way onto the team with a whole set of Nimbus 2001s. Hermione said something about it and he called her a filthy mudblood. A what? A mudblood? It's a really disgusting name for someone who was born of non-magical parents. There are some wizards, like Malfoy's family, who think they're better than everyone else. Anyway, it's a horrible thing to say. If it hadn't been for Hagrid showing up, I'd have cursed him. Ron, what is it with you and your convulsions? Oh, I suppose you're right. Can't be good for your spine. Anyway, I'm tired and I'm off to bed. Let's go. Anyway, if you were somehow also paying attention to the text that popped up when Wood was giving his A plot speech, you would have noticed that he's given us this new item. Uh, here he's Nimbus 2000. And you can use it to fly around Hogwarts grounds. No other areas, not inside the castle, nor in other places we might go later. You'll see. It's just a nice little th uh, little thing. There are some pretty bots, every flavored beans that appear, and go into your bean bag if you fly through those rings. We might explore some of the places you can go on this broom later, but for now I just thought I'd show you the cool little function of flying around. So I think that pretty much wraps it up for this episode. We've gone and done all of Harry's classes today. And next episode, we're going to do potentially one of my least favorite parts of the game. So, see all of you then.